This video is brought to you by Ustadi Academy. And in this video, we are going to speak about Omar ibn al-Khattab. This is going to be part three. Omar ibn al-Khattab and migration to Medina. Due to the safety offered by Yathrib, Muhammad ordered his followers to migrate to Medina. Most Muslims migrated at night, fearing Quraysh resistance, of course. But Omar doesn't really give a hoot about it. Omar is reported to have left openly during the day saying anyone who wants to make his wife a widow and his children orphans should come and meet me there behind that cliff. Omar migrated to Medina with his cousin and brother-in-law Saeed ibn Zaid. By the way, he was married to his sister as we've mentioned before. Life in Medina. When Muhammad arrived in Medina, he paired each immigrant, Muhajir, with one of the residents of the city, Ansari, making them brothers in faith. Later, in Omar's reign as Caliph, Muhammad ibn Maslama would be assigned the office of Chief Inspector of Accountability. Muslims then remained in peace in Medina for approximately a year before the Quraysh raised a whole army to attack them. Omar participated in the first battle between Muslims and Quraysh of Mecca, the Battle of Badr, and that took place in 625. He took part in the Battle of Uhud in the second phase of the battle when Khalid ibn al Walid attacked. Um, the Muslim rear turning the tide of battle, rumors of Muhammad's death were spread around and many Muslim warriors basically were rooted from the battlefield, Omar among them. However, hearing that Muhammad was still alive, he went to Muhammad at the mountain of Uhud and prepared to the defense of the hell. Later in the year, Omar was a part of a campaign against the Jewish tribe of Banu Nadir. And some actually people tell that they were called Banu Nadr. Omar's daughter Hafsa was married to Muhammad. Later on, he participated in the Battle of the Trench and also in the Battle of Banu Quraiza. Omar witnessed the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, which was known in Arabic as Sulh al Hudaybiyah. He fought in the Battle of Khaybar. Muhammad sent Amr ibn al As, after which Muhammad sent Abu Ubaidah, Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah himself, with rain, like with reinforcements, with army, including Abu Bakr and Omar, whereupon they attacked and defeated the enemy in 630. When Muslim armies rushed for the conquest of Mecca, or what it's called Fath Mecca, he was part of that army. Later, he fought in the Battle of Hunayn and the Siege of Ta'if. He was part of the Muslim army that contested the Battle of Tabuk under Muhammad's reign, or under Muhammad's command, I would say. And he was reported to have given half of his wealth for the preparation of the expedition. He also participated in the farewell Hajj of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in 632. Now, let's spot some lights on Muhammad's death. When Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam died on the 8th of June 632, Omar initially disbelieved that he was dead. It is said that Omar promised to strike the head of any man who would say that Muhammad died. Omar said he has not died, but rather he has gone to his Lord just as Moses went, remaining absent from his people for 40 nights, after which he has returned to them. By Allah, the Messenger of Allah will indeed return just as Moses returned to his people, and he will cut off the lands he will cut off the hands, legs of these men who claimed he has died 
Abu Bakr then publicly spoke to the community of the mosque, saying, Whoever worshipped Muhammad, let them know that Muhammad has died. And whoever worshipped Allah, let them know that Allah is alive and never dies. Abu Bakr then recited those verses of the Holy Quran, which says, Muhammad is but a messenger. Messengers, the like of whom, have passed away before him if then he dies or is killed will you turn your back on your religion will you turn your back on your heel hearing this omar fell on his knees in sorrow deep sadness and acceptance sony muslims say that this type of denial of muhammad's death was occasioned by his deep love for him.